all of you unfortunately find yourselves in the dangerous position of having a priest whose homily just changed. As I was preparing before Mass, I was quite struck by the power of this gospel. It's not one that we hear as much as others, but if we look, it's easy to miss the main character, the master of the vineyard. And if we look closely at these words, we realize, as we hear in the Gospel of John, that Jesus is at work. He tells people that much in chapter 12, right? That the Father is always at work, and so am I. In other words, he's always trying to get us into this vineyard, always trying to bring us closer to him, into his church, into his kingdom. And easily we miss it because we so much are focused on our work, on what we've done, our great and glorious achievements. But if we look carefully at this, we realize that we are those who came at five o'clock to work for that measly hour at the end of the day. And the reason for this is because this particular parable encapsulates all of time and creation. As our Lord speaks, he begins by talking about the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn. Now, if he was going out at dawn, he was already ready, prepared before the dawn even came. And this makes us think of the beginning of creation, that God existed before time began. And as he was preparing to create, the great things that he had awaiting for us were in his mind and in his heart. And so he created his first work in this world, but certainly not his first work in himself. And slowly but surely, he began calling people to himself. First Adam, later Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Moses, and King David. And these, each time, are coming at different hours of creation. Until eventually, he sends his son. His son comes into this world to continue calling people to that vineyard, into his kingdom, into his church, which he founded through his son. And over and over, these people are continuing to labor, continuing to try and do their best to extend the work of God in this world. Then our Lord comes and begins his church, and we enter into that last part of creation the age of the church, the age in which God is fulfilling all of his promises through Christ. And at 3 p.m. on this day of creation, his son was on the cross. His son was raised from the dead. And from that moment forward, we were always at the end of the day. So we're these people that come at five, that basically they show up, punch the time clock, see everybody else and say, what nice work you've done. I'm glad to be part of this but we haven't done much at all. And as soon as we start thinking that we have, a great pride sets in. Well, I'm as good as Abraham and Moses and all the apostles and saints. Look at the great things that I have done. We've not done anything. And as soon as we change that perspective, everything changes with it. If we realize that Jesus is the one at work, that he is working even today in our lives, it doesn't matter if someone is a cradle Catholic or a deathbed conversion, because that change in perspective makes us realize we are all being welcomed into that vineyard, into that kingdom. And this daily wage has nothing to do with money, but eternal glory in heaven. In the Gospel of Luke, our Lord says that the angels of heaven rejoice so much over one repentant sinner. And we can be that repentant sinner whether we were here in the time of Abraham or now. We can always come to the Lord and be welcomed into that vineyard and rejoice with those who rejoice. I don't imagine many people today would be upset that someone converts to the Lord. But when we focus, well, I've done all of these things. I've supported the church. I've done this for the parish. Those are good things. But if it's only our work, it's going to get us nowhere. If, however, we work for Jesus with Jesus, everything changes. Because he's the landowner. He's the one that got up before dawn to prepare for us. He's the one that keeps going out, calling us to work in his labor. And when it's his labor, 
it saves us. It's salvific and it changes us, transforms us in the depths of our heart. Just consider the many graces he gives us every day. Here at this moment, many of you are baptized. Some are perhaps preparing for that. That is one of the best graces we could ever get because we are then incorporated always and forever into the life of God. All of the other sacraments do the same. We receive the very body and blood of Jesus at this altar. Marriage and holy orders allow us to extend his work and not ours to others in this world. The creed that we're about to say, that's the great inheritance that we have as Christians. Part of that daily wage of eternal life that starts now. And so we don't begrudge anyone who is given this same wage. Because it's heaven. Anticipated here, but hopefully, please God, fulfilled for all of us when we die in heaven. This daily wage then is nothing less than God himself. And that's why no matter when we come, we can receive that wage. Because he's almost scandalously generous with his love and mercy. It's only Christianity that is daring enough to say God is willing to give us himself to forgive our great sins and to call us to labor with him and not simply to be slaves trampled on underfoot. That is his generosity. And if we're willing to accept that, we extend his work. We're taken up into the great opus of who he is and what he's doing for us. And because of that, we have hope that no matter what's going on in this world, it's a drop in the bucket. Because God, the infinite and almighty, is working for us. Sure, he calls us to work in his labor, in his vineyard. He calls us not to be idle. But he's in fact working for us. Drawing us closer. Bringing us in. Through the sacraments, through the church, through our community. So enjoy that. Consider this week, as you have time, the many blessings God has given you as signals of his grace and glory in your life. Be thankful for that. Because if he can bring goodness out of the cross, he can bring goodness out of anything wrong in our lives or in our world. Because he is at work. He is at work even now for us. And if we are willing, we can work with him and change the world.